Hello and welcome to Game Templates. In this video, we'll be using the Rail Shooter template to create a fast and action-packed shooter game. We'll start by creating our level in Gaia, and then we'll add in our player controller, and finally, we'll set up the enemies and power-ups in our game. The Rail Shooter template is available for Canopy subscribers and can be found in Canopy. Simply go to Downloads, Game Ready Levels and Templates, and download the Game Template Rail Shooter Unity Package file here. Before we can start to create our shooter template, we need to ensure we have the following tools installed in our project. We will need to import the Rail Shooter Game Template, which contains all of the dynamic gameplay elements for our shooter game. We will also need to import Gina Pro so that we can spawn enemies and power-ups and create splines to act as our rails for our player to fly along. And for the sake of this video, we'll be using Gaia to create our level environment, but you can use any other tool you like to create your environment. Now that we have all the necessary tools installed, we can now start creating our shooter game. The first thing we need to do is create an environment for our level. For this example, we'll be using Gaia along with Sinti's low poly biome that comes with it. Once our level is created, we can now add our rail shooter prefab to our scene. Go to procedural worlds, Game Templates, Rail Shooter, Prefabs, and drag the Rail Shooter prefab into your scene. This prefab contains all of the core gameplay logic we need to play our game along with the player controller. Since we are using Gaia to create our environment, we can now create our runtime effects in our level using the player ship as our custom controller. Simply go to the Create Runtime panel in the Gaia Manager, then select Custom for Player Controller, Click and drag the player controller game object in our scene into the custom player option and fly cam into the custom camera option. And then we can create our runtime. Next, we are going to start by spawning some enemies and power-ups into our scene. To do this, we are going to use the genus spawners that come with the rail shooter game template. Go to the rail shooter folder and then go to asset samples, Gina, spawners, and click and drag the enemy spawner into our scene. We can now start to paint enemies in our environment, and they will be pre-configured with default waypoints and height offsets. It's also worth noting that you can modify this layout by going into the Layouts folder in Asset Samples and modifying the enemy layout prefab that comes with it. Once this is modified, simply re-ingest the layout into your spawner to have it updated. And lastly, we're going to spawn our power-ups in our scene by spawning both twin power-ups and hyper power-ups in our environment. If we hit play, we can see that we now have a functioning shooter game where you can fly around the world, shoot at enemies, and collect power-ups. Although to make our game feel more like a rail shooter, the player will need to be confined to the camera and only able to travel along a predetermined path. To do this, we'll need to create a Gina spline to act as our rail and have our player fly along the length of the spline with the option to loop. Simply create a Gina spline by right clicking in the hierarchy, then select Gina, add spline. Press control and click around your environment to create nodes where you want your player to travel. Once you're happy with your spline, then click and drag the Gina spline into the Gina panel of the Game Manager, which is located in the Rail Shooter prefab. And then hit play. You'll now see that our player is confined to the camera viewport and following along the Gina spline for movement. By having this constraint, we are providing players with a more immersive experience and guiding the player through our environment. Along with having the spline in our game, we can now spawn enemies, power-ups, and other interactable objects along our spline. For this demonstration, we're going to remove all of the enemies and power-ups that we spawned earlier from the scene. Next, we're going to click and drag the spawners we want to use into our genus spline. We can configure the spawn behavior whichever way we want, and then we're going to hit spawn. If we hit play, we can see that all of the interactable objects are now set along the predetermined path and in view of the player when traveling along the spline. This has essentially provided more meaningful events for our players when they are playing throughout the level. Finally, let's look at how we can improve our terrain to fit our art style. 
If you're looking to create a low poly terrain in Unity, Gaia is the perfect tool for the job. With its built-in terrain mesh exporter, we can easily reduce the number of vertices on your terrain without losing any of the textures or features. Simply open up the Gaia Manager, head over to the Advanced tab, and go over to the Gaia tools and select the Terrain Mesh Exporter. Here, we can configure the export of our terrain using a bunch of presets. In this case, we want to convert our terrain to low poly. There are a bunch of configurations for converting to low poly, but the only thing I want to change is the mesh resolution. Therefore, I'm going to open up the LOD level 0 settings and change the mesh resolution to 8th, and then start the export. Once Gaia has finished exporting our terrain, we can now see that our terrain is successfully exported as a mesh that has been decimated to fit our art style. If you wish to learn more about the Rail Shooter game template, you can find the documentation in Game Templates, Rail Shooter, Documentation. Alternatively, you can also find more information on the game template through Canopy by going to Library, Content Packs, Game Templates, and looking at the Rail Shooter game template article located here. If you would like to learn more about our products and tools, be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can stay tuned for more future tutorials. As always, thanks for watching.